Welcome back to Block TV, where it is time for Blockheads. Every day we round up the top headlines from around the cryptosphere and to run us through today's top stories, joined by none other than our very own Whitney Deal. Whitney, take it away. Thanks, Yael. First up today is a developing story from Coindesk with IRS says it's sending warning letters to U.S. cryptocurrency owners. Cointelegraph reports John McAfee back in jail hours after release in Dominican Republic. Business Insider informs Warren Buffett's lunch with crypto whiz kid Justin Sun has sparked conspiracies, public apologies, and arrests in China. While you today lets us know Ethereum-based gaming token made by 12-year-old gets SEC's approval. Okay, let's break these down. I can't wait for the 12-year-old. But um, <laughs> <laughs> that said, um, uh, this is quite interesting with the IRS. Yes. Break it down. Well, because <clears throat> Uncle Sam always wants his share and to ruin all the financial fun, the IRS announced on Friday that it has begun sending letters to taxpayers who own cryptocurrency, advising them to pay any back taxes they may owe or to file amended tax returns regarding their holdings. The agency began mailing educational letters last week and will have sent such letters to more than 10,000 taxpayers by the end of this month and obtained the names of these taxpayers through various ongoing IRS compliance efforts. One Redditor posted the letter he received in which the IRS stated that they knew the recipient may hold one or more crypto accounts and may not have correctly filed their taxes on the coins. The letter reads, for one or more of tax years 2013 through 2017, we haven't received either a federal income tax return or an applicable form or schedule reporting your virtual currency transactions. The letter continued by outlining actions that subsequently need to be taken, such as if you fail to file one or more income tax returns, file the delinquent returns and report your virtual currency transactions as soon as possible. And if you made a mistake, on your income tax return, such as not reporting your virtual currency transaction or incorrectly calculating your income, gain or loss, you can file an amended return. The IRS released a statement saying taxpayers should take these letters very seriously by reviewing their tax filings and when appropriate amend past returns and pay back taxes, interest and penalties. The IRS is expanding their efforts involving virtual currency, including increased use of data analytics. They're focused on enforcing the law and helping taxpayers fully understand and meet their obligations. This was all reported that they were taking part in this back in May. Back in May. And, and you know, back tax, I mean, I think the fascinating bit here is that, you know, they are going to ask, and not they're not going, they're asking for the money, yep. the, back ta the, the back pay, so to speak, of those taxes between 2013, was it? And, yeah, um, and 2017. Yeah. And it's 2017. Just, it's not fair. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> they do it. Yeah. Now, with us today also is, um, uh, it's a perfect time to go to Or um, uh, Lokai Korn. She's the vice president of BitTax to provide some insight um, uh, on these IRS tax. I don't even want to call them regulations because what are they at this point? Um, uh, first of all, significant letter, right, Or? Why is that? Well, we all know that this is coming. We have seen the IRS is looking into cryptocurrencies okay. issues. Way back in 2014, they had a guidance and people supposed to file taxes. But in the reality, people, most of the people did not report their currency to the IRS. So we all knew this is coming with enforcement time. The IRS is stop playing games. You must submit and correct in full and accuracy report of your all of your full crypto activity to the IRS. Okay. Now, what, is, what does this signify? What does it mean for crypto holders at this point? Well, as you, we all know crypto holders, a lot of them were, tax me if you can, I'm not going to pay taxes for this, I, I don't want to, it's not fair, and we don't, ha we, don't, we don't think that the government should be involved in cryptocurrency. But we all know that uh, in many countries around the world, also in the United States, people have to report the cryptocurrency as assets and to pay Gains caps. Uh, the letter is specifically saying you have to file a full report for all the years of activity since day one till today and to include the wallets, the ICOs, the uh, exchanges, info, all the information you need to file a complete and accurate report to the IRS. Some of them have filed, but just 
with without a full activity, with no uh, with no re- maybe some of the exchanges, right. some of the work. No, no. Not everything. But and again, I think the conclusion from here is we all knew this was coming. I think on the road to institutionalization, people will have to understand no matter what they believe or what their ideology is. Come on, still, it's the law to pay taxes. The IRS, you know, is trying to figure its way into this new uh, situation. But Orla, Kai, I want to thank you so much for joining us today, thank Vice you. President of BitTax. Um, and of course, Whitney, back to you, because there are other people who are breaking the law. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, McAfee is back in the slammer, according to a Twitter post on July 26th. The tweet reads, my second arrest in one week, a record, I think. He subsequently wrote on his return to custody. Apparently, he was able to get his phone smuggled into his holding cell to send out the tweets. But the tweet did not provide any further details about this latest lockup. But his last known whereabouts placed him in the UK. As we all know, earlier this... Oh, come on. I'm just looking at that cell picture. Yes, okay, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Move ahead. Because mm-hmm. as we all know, um, McAfee and the missus were detained in the Dominican Republic and spent four days in the slammer. So while we await further vitriolic and mentally unstable tweets from him, we will continue to monitor the situation, especially to find out the whereabouts of his fur babies, which seem to be with a, on a French farm in the Dominican Republic still. But definitely without their master. Without though. their master, okay, but following, following this report. Okay, <laughs> that's it, at least that. Um, yes, to more, um, uh, I don't even know how to put it. Um, uh, let's, let's move now to um, uh, the fallout, shall we call it, from that really, really, that debacle that we know as the uh, Warren Buffett lunch. Yes, Warren Buffett and Justin Sun's charity lunch has sparked conspiracy theories, public apologies, and arrests on the other side of the world. According to Sun, the postponed lunch has produced a lot of consequences that he completely did not expect. Sun, who shelled out $4.6 million to dine with Buffett, only to postpone three days before the meal due to kidney stones, apologized on Chinese social media platform Weibo. Sun blamed his immaturity and quote-unquote big mouth for the outsized publicity and pledged to take a step back from the public eye while promising to put the interests of the country, sector, and the public above anything else. He added that the hype around the lunch attracted the scrutiny of regulatory authorities and led to a much unexpected outcome. However, the rumor mill is running and says that there was reports that Sun was approached by Chinese authorities to cancel the lunch due to the current trade war between the U.S. and China. It's an interesting theory, given given the press roller coaster around the story. It's you no, know, it's an interesting theory, but as you mentioned, rightfully so, very much still a theory, as everything yes. was with the information that came out on the parts um, uh, of Tron in that respect, and cannot be described as anything other. I'm saying this than a shit show. Right. Um, yes. <laughs> Moving along. Mm-hmm. The SEC surprisingly, has officially uh, approved a recently launched gaming ERC-20 token in a crypto startup founded by a 12-year-old. The gaming startup, called A Pocket Full of Quarters, has had their tokens approved by the ultra-crypto-wary SEC. Well, probably because they're officially not considered to be securities, but it's still, it's still cool. Even cooler yet is that the startup was founded by a 12-year-old boy from Connecticut. The quarter's token is untradeable and it will not be used as a speculative asset on exchanges. This is nothing but a use case token, therefore the SEC will not qualify it as a security. And the coins will be used purely inside the ecosystem of the startup where gamers will be able to use it to purchase add-ons and numerous items offered for trade in the game. Look, maybe eventually it's going to be a 12-year-old that will break down the SEC. We don't know. That's it. <laughs> All impressive. Hopefully, um, uh, we'll one day. I just want to meet this kid's mother. Um, Whitney, thank you so much. Very enlightening. Uh, Blockheads. This was Blockheads. We were Block TV. We'll be right back. For more news and updates, follow us on Twitter.